welcome back. So I'm in the boat. I have a fresh cup of tea with my cup from Lowestoft, uh, which is actually quite applicable because as we speak, Jaco is sailing with Remy to Lowestoft again. So I already made the trip once with him, uh, but this time he's uh, on the boat with Karl. Karl Jaco! Veilig vaart! Um, in the meantime, I'm prepping the boat here for my solo adventures. Lifelines, I need to install them. I actually have a whole bunch of them made by the sailmaker. Didn't want to jeopardize the stitching. And uh, today we're going to talk about the barometer, the barometer, we say in Dutch. I'm quite a fan of the Zeilen magazine. Uh, I have quite a few. And in this particular example, they explained how pressure systems worked and i wanted to replicate it for you so you kind of also understand and can anticipate of what the wind is doing and how strong the wind is going to be so we all know the app windy and uh, on that app you can actually see a storm passing by quite nicely so here you see a storm approaching the netherlands it's a low pressure area it first hits england it kind of curves around England and then hits the Netherlands full on. Uh, another one is actually already building behind it, uh, but it was uh, quite a, uh, a hefty storm. We reached force 12, um, which I had not seen before. There is now a gale warning. The pressure dropped from 1012 to 1003. You can actually see it in the graph quite nicely um, and it's interesting to see that the, the device actually indicates what that means. Looking at the barometer obviously is a nice thing to do. As you could see it was a quite a steep drop um, but looking outside actually also showed what was happening. This was actually the first time that I saw water being picked up it's uh, I think 500 square meters of water uh, in between houses actually uh, but wa uh, wind just picked water up and splashed it around you could actually get wet from spray so uh, that was a first really blowing quite hard uh, you can also see the boat rocking about and uh, the neighbor has a nice camera you can uh, follow along uh, and in the city uh, it actually became quite scary uh, so this is one of the movies i got from the internet where you actually see that it not always goes as planned oh my god hij gaat er letterlijk zo uit oh my god meneer So quite impressive and definitely something you want to prepare for if you are out there. Um, obviously, uh, it's better to prevent these situations, but if you are in these situations, it's good to prepare and you can look at the barometer uh, and how quick it drops uh, depending on what to expect. So let's just take a regular depression, low pressure area in the Atlantic and use it to explain. You are looking at a British Meteo Services Brecknell chart. And in the bottom left, you see the low pressure area with 990. And instead of going from left to right, what they normally do, this one actually goes from the bottom to the top. Uh, first, it deepens, so 995 to 986. And then it fills up 990, 1000. 10, 11, and in the end, even 10, 13. So first, let's have a look at this low pressure area where it's at its deepest. So you see the low pressure area and it is at 986. And then if you look closely, you actually see rings around it where the pressure gets higher. So the further you are from the center point, the higher the pressure gets. And this whole low pressure area goes to 10, 20. So where there are low pressures, there are high pressures. And actually low pressures and high pressures work together. They kind of collide or they form one. So where the 
low pressure one stops at 1020, the high pressure one starts at 1024, goes to 1028 and in the end becomes 1030. And you could actually see it as a sort of a mountain. Uh, the high pressure is the mountain and the low pressure is the valley. And what is important to note is that the wind revolves on a high pressure area clockwise and on a low pressure area counterclockwise. So if you would draw that on this Bracknell chart, it would actually look a little something like this. The interesting thing is you are looking at a 2D representation of the world, a flat one. And as we all know, the world isn't flat. So let's just draw it flat and then put in the altitude and you would actually see that you would have a mountain where the wind comes down clockwise and then once it comes to the low pressure area it actually goes counterclockwise and now you might wonder like where does this wind actually go because how does it get on the top and how does it go to the bottom and this is actually something you probably know from a tornado or something the wind is actually sucked up into the higher atmosphere and then transferred to the high pressure area where it comes down again. Uh, and this 3D representation is actually helpful to just understand what the wind is doing in these high and low pressure areas. Let's just look at what the wind is doing if you would go straight through a low pressure area. So here we go from the top to the bottom. So what you basically see is you go all the way down to 986 and once you're there it goes back up to 1016 and onwards obviously and this is basically the essence of reading the barometer if a low pressure area is moving very fast the pressure lines come very close and if you are sailing there and your barometer drops like a rocket then you know a um, low pressure area is moving towards you very fast and the lower the numbers go the steeper the hill is the harder it will blow that's basically it now that was insightful wasn't it but there's more because looking at the pressure system you can also see where the wind will be coming from Let's use the same route again. We go from north to south, which basically means that your port side is on the other end. Well, you know what I mean. In this case, when you will be sailing, you will have the wind on your port side first, all the way until you get to the low. There you will be in a bit of a no wind situation or variable. And then all of a sudden the wind will come from the complete other side. It will come from the starboard side. So what is the chances of going through the, the middle of a low pressure area? Well, statistically see not as big as that you will get part of the low pressure area. And where we normally sail, we tend to get the part where it rains on the Atlantic. So let's look at a situation where you would go. And in this case, we go from north to south again. But normally you would go from west, east to west. Um, where you actually enter in that situation. So at first you will have the wind on your port side, uh, half wind maybe uh, uh, reaching, um, and then the wind will veer uh, until you actually have to do an overstag uh, to get the wind from the other end. Uh, this is actually something, especially if the uh, cold front has passed, there is a clear wind shift. I'll get back to that a little bit later. But what you can see here is that basically also the wind changes in direction around you. Let's do one more to just kind of understand the principle here. Let's say you pass the low pressure on the other side. Then you will see that you will have a uh, following wind, which is on your port side. And that will turn to your starboard side. So you basically have to jibe as the wind is backing. Now there's one more thing I'm explaining because it's on the map anyway. And that is that there is a warm front and a cold front. 
if you look at the pattern of the low, you basically see a little bit a wave. If you actually look in WindGuru or in WindFinder, you can also see that the cold air and the warm air not necessarily are separated by a straight line, uh, but create waves that roll over the northern hemisphere. Um, these waves have a warm front and a cold front. And the cold front, the warm front gives drizzle. And once the cold front comes in, you have showers. And after that, nine out of 10 times, a quite clear wind shift. And this wind shift, uh, if the wind shift is been there, then you know you've had the worst of the ring and uh, you can wait for the next low pressure area. That's it. That was the insight that I wanted to share with you, boys and girls. Um, the barometer, yeah. If you get it, it's easy. But if you don't, then I hope you do now. And if not, leave a comment. And then I will try to explain it next time. Ah, speaking about next time. Next time will be about some projects on the boat and preparing her for solo sailing because yes, we are continuing our trip. Very exciting indeed. So, um, hope you uh, join us next time. Uh, if you want a reminder, hit subscribe. Uh, if you liked this video, leave a like. And if you have a comment, leave a comment. See you next time, boys and girls. Cheerio.